Right, well, we're not on the wall. There's a reason for that. Come on, you want it to be a video. Okay. <laughs> this one, who's not even in shot, I think. Hang on, stay there. Oh, you are just. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to have the rod tips and you in shot. This one really wants to start fishing. Nice. So what you may or may not have seen in the time lapse was her first ever attempt at a cast. A little bit more practice needed. <laughs> But she reeled in, it was hard work, but she reeled in. And if you imagine that was hard work, imagine what it's like with a fish pulling against you. Mm. <laughs> Two times, wouldn't it? It's a lot harder, yeah, especially if it's a big fish. So we've come down to Humston Fitties. The main reason being is so that this one can have a go. Wall's brilliant for fishing from your boot and things like that. But you can't beat sand under your feet. Um, and for having young'un, be able to sort of cast without a risk of hitting the wall and things like that and be able to walk to the seafront to reel in and be able to see what she's doing things like that makes a whole world of difference she's got the fisherman's stance already look oh you just do what you're doing see she's got it down hasn't she next generation there that is now rig wise what i've sent out is one scratching rig so a two up clip down Pardon? It's all right, leave it alone. Let it develop for a minute. I thought I thought I saw a little twitch as well, but you, what you'll see, Rosa, is the rod tip will go quite hard. Oh, so a, a little ding like that is something having a sniff. Yeah. A big ding is a fish tugging on it. But every time you touch it, it'll shake the rod. Oh. <laughs> Watch. Every time you go touch it, uh, that's just one finger look. Even like this. Yeah. So you've got to have patience. Fishing is a patient game. Okay. Which is not something you're very good at, is it? No. I need to get this intro finished before this battery runs out. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, Mama. we've come down really for her. It's a lovely day. The sea's flat calm. Um, we're at the, the end of the creek, the start of the fitties. Um, so yeah, rig wise, I've just sent out a, 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 a two up or a pulley panel with two small hooks on it. Uh, I think a, a two o Aberdeen and a one o Chinu. And this this one, Rose's rod, as we're now going to call it. This isn't the Synetic, This is an Advanta Beach Caster. Um, This Rose's rod, as we're going to call it, has just got a scratching rig on, so it's got a smooth lead and a two-up clip down. Uh, we're only fishing with rag. We have got a little bit of squid as well, so as that defrost will switch to uh, rag with a squid flag on it. So we'll have a look at that when it comes time. Um, but yeah, we just thought we'd, we'd score a few hours on the beach. We're fresh out of uh, isolation. It literally, mine literally ended midnight last night. So yeah, so yeah, we're uh, we're back out on the sand, and it's lovely to be out, and it is a nice day as well. So, what time are we on? Eleven o'clock. So we're going to have a couple of chucks. Um, and a chill out and some lunch. High tides at about half twelve, one o'clock. So hopefully we're not going to get pushed too far back because I like how we're set up now. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll do some time lapsing because I know everybody likes it. Just for this first sort of little bit. So I'll hook the battery up so the camera doesn't die and I'll record some time lapse and I'll see you in a bit.
to me I might not have filmed the, the, the setup time lapse if I haven't I apologize um, we'll just add a, a reel in um, nothing there the baits it did look as though might have might have had a, a little snifter at but what I've done I'm continuing fishing straight out on this one which does keep getting little taps only little but they're there and then I've just put Rosa's rod over to the right sort of towards where the entrance to the creek is um, there's a there's a sand gully there and if you fish on the sides of the gullies that tends to be where the flatties sit um, as I normally I would have perhaps walked further down um, to fish more in the gully or perhaps off the metal pier that you've seen me fish off before um, but like I said this, this, this trip isn't about me and it's not so much really about oh no and there was a little there's a little bit of knocking don't touch them there's a little bit of knocking just on yours only a tiny bit but remember yours is on a your weight doesn't grip into the sand like mine does yours is meant to move a little bit yeah that's where my phone was okay carry on. okay you finished your lunch yeah you're not having your crisps no okay I'm i might eat them no, I'm i like prawn cocktail <laughs> so yeah just thought I'd have a quick chat see how we do oh god the paddle borders are here it's the only real problem with this beach because the car park is so close yeah right because the car park is so close it's so favourable to dog walkers and paddle I mean I'll show you Look. and this is this is quiet um, you know it, it's for, for, for what it is it's, it's very quiet down here today um, oh. trying to make sure you've got the rod tips in shot um, but this morning when we first came on it it were there were dogs and people everywhere, weren't there? Yeah. It's, it, it does get crazy busy down here. Yeah, your rod's definitely... Uh, I think we might, someone might be having a little sniffle. Um, but I wanted, actually, I was hoping the tide was going to be far enough out. As obviously, you will know, the UK coast, the East Coast, well, all the UK coasts, really, I've been battered by two consecutive storms so I was hoping to get down here for a little bit lower end of the tide to see if these sandbars have moved because when fishing here that's exactly what you want to be aiming for you want to be fishing on the sandbars or on the sides of the sandbars in the channels uh, the tide wasn't actually as far out as I thought it was going to be when we got here so wasn't able to have a look but it's just nice to be out of home, isn't it, Rosa? Yeah. We've been stuck in home for like two weeks, haven't we? Mm -hmm. You know, we did the right thing. We did the responsible thing. We Let's stayed home. About. In fact, we've stayed home for for yeah. nearly 16 days in total, haven't we? Yeah, because everybody else got home. Yeah. So, right now. the first day where the entire household was, was essentially out of... Um, isolation and we've we've come out um, you know we Rosa Charlotte and myself we all we all cleared up of symptoms and things like that oh nearly a week ago but we did the right we did the responsible thing <coughs> wow, that's a good sand, sand. Um, <laughs> Just on the way here, it was just a thought, really, about, sort of with Rosa coming and things like that, about the up-and-coming fishermen and about, and, and women, and about making sure that these fishing marks are still available to them. 
if we don't look after, as anglers, if we don't look after the areas in which we fish, the marks that we like to use, if we don't leave them clean, um, if we're not respectful of other beach users, then we could, you know, these things could be taken away from us. And whilst a lot of you will sit there and say, oh, well, it's not my, you know, I'm, I'm still going to be able to fish. It might not affect you, but it might affect them. So please just think about the people that have to come after us. Um, you know, the, 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 the access to Immingham Wall is forever teetering in a balance. And, um, you know, you've got, you've got responsible fishermen, you've got Frank, you've got um, Vern, you've got myself. All the fishermen that I go fishing with, we all, almost every time, will end up having to take, we'll end up taking at least a bag of rubbish home with us that isn't ours. <laughs> and I must apologise, Frank put a post up. Uh, oh, but just, just as I went into isolation, I think it was about two, three weeks ago, um, Frank put a post up about some mattresses and I says, oh, bloody hell, they weren't there. I didn't, I've never seen them. And he says, well, oh, well, they've been there for like two or three weeks. I was hoping somebody else took them because one of the mattresses was covered in faeces. I mean, what a star. What an absolute star. If you ever see Frank, if you, or if you, you know, if I ever have the opportunity, I must at least buy you a pint. Um, but the same goes for all you anglers out there that are responsible, that take home your waste, and that take home waste also that doesn't belong to you. So please, Please, if we don't look after it, we're going to lose it. All right. Um, you know, all this, all these people. And uh, yes, I agree. It's not always the fishermen, especially the likes of Ingham, Immingham. It's fly tipping. Fly tipping is the major problem down there. And as fishermen, there's not a great deal we can do. But there is a lot of irresponsible fishermen that go, they leave their beer cans, they leave their food, cat, food containers, um, waste line, hooks, and it's, it's behaviour like that that's going to lose the fishing mark for the, for the generations to come. So I'll get off my soapbox. I just want to say thank you, an extra, as I do numerous times, but you know I can never say thank you enough to those that take it out of their own time to go and clean these places and for those that are responsible, thank you. So while we've been talking and Rosa's not been watching the rods, I've got no idea what's gone on. Wow, those lads have got a lot of fishing rods out. In between them, there's about six rods out between the two of them. Fair play, it's more than I could be bothered to manage. Um, I'll tell you, what should we do? What should we do? We'll put the time lapse back on while it's nice, while it's sunny, and then I'm going to try and film a nice shot of the casting of me with my knackered shoulder. I have actually got some diagnosis on that, and I have actually been referred to full physio. Um, there is something actually, actually wrong with my shoulder. They don't know quite what it is. Um, but I'll try and get you. Now I've got the sensi tip on again today, not the not the power tip. Um, and I'm not really banging it out, but I'll try and get you a so you can see the action on the rod. Um, bear in mind it is a new rod; it's not broken in. Um, but yeah, uh, we've had a close up look at it, so we don't need to do that. We will have a close up look at the rigs. And when it's a bit quieter, I'll do a pan around the beach so that you can see. Um, for those of you that inevitably are going to ask how to get to this mark, it's basically, you come all the way down through Cleethorpes, keep going all the way to the end, past the McDonald's, past the Taco Bell, past, and you get to, is it Thorpe Park, isn't it, Rose of the Signs? and you head down into Thorpe Park and you just keep going straight and you'll see a car park on your left. 
So you go down into Thorpe Park and the first car park that you see on your left and you park up and you just walk over a dune and you're here. It's a real easy mark to get to. Um, just be aware it is heavily frequented by dog walkers. It is a dog walkers beach, it is a dog friendly beach. So bear that in mind when you keep, where you keep your bait and things like that. Um, it used to be that you didn't fish this beach on anything greater than a six metre tide, but I haven't seen what's out there now. So there used to be a massive sandbar which made it, um, put, which made a nice channel in the water, but that sandbar could have washed out now. I don't know. I'm trying to hit it with the, with the close-in rod, with Rosa's rod, um, or, or sit in the gully at the back of the sandbar. And then with my rod, I'm trying to hit just the other side of it. Um, but I don't know, for all I know really, because of these storms, both these baits could be sat on the very top of the sandbar. But fingers crossed, we'll see some fish. Um, there was a catch report came out here midweek uh, of some decent sized flounder, some dabs, some whitings. Um, so fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Um, it's, a, it's an either side, it's a flood and ebb mark. It's not really a high water mark. Uh, and if you wanted to, I mean, you can, you can fish it out. Um, this is a mark that you can fish up and down and all day if you really want to. Uh, I do not recommend, if you can see it on camera, there is a sandbank that, like today, will probably stay above water all day. But I do not recommend fishing on there. Um, because anything above a six metre and it disappears. Um, and it, and it, it's there and then two minutes later it's gone. I have seen in the few times I've been here, I've seen somebody have to get rescued off there three times. Um, obviously, at least I assume not the same person. In the car. Go rinse it in the sea. Huh? Go rinse your hands in the sea. Uh, you were the one that put your hands in the sand. <laughs> You're already wet and dirty, so what difference is it going to make? Um, yeah. So it's a peaceful mark for the most part. Uh, summer to, and it's a summer winter mark. It does fish all year round. <laughs> It's only water. It's not gonna hurt. It's not gonna hurt, yeah. Um. Oh. oh. Your rod. Just had a nice little shake on it. It's still bouncing a little bit. You see it? No. Yeah. You see it then? Yeah. Right. Anyway. I'm going to set a time lapse going again. I know they are very popular. So I'm going to set a time lapse going again and I'll see you in a bit.
Thought we'd have a, another little chat. You've been watching the rods for a little while. I'll make myself a cup of tea. Rosa keeps getting herself caked in mud and then complaining she can't eat. So I'm going to eat her prawn cocktail crisps. Mm. No, you're not. See, my hands dry. Put them in your pockets then. Huh? Put them in your pockets. No. Put them in your pockets, they'll dry. I'll warm up a bit and they'll dry. So I know you got a little bit bored, aren't you, of fishing this trip? But do you still want to fish? Yeah. I want to go to the beach and the walls. Well, we'll go to the wall again soon, during Christmas holidays. Because okay. um, the first weekend of the Christmas holidays, the tide's quite high, so we might be able to go to the wall then. Well, I've also a lot of the, a lot of the guys out here in YouTube land. Yeah. Are wanting me to go to Fuller Street again, which is I don't know if you've been there. I haven't. Uh, but I might have to do that one on my own because it's quite a walk to the car, okay. and and it's on the wall, so it's uh, I don't know. We'll see. Oh, yeah, there goes your rod again. It wasn't a firm enough to be a bite. I think it might have been the lead bouncing. Wow. There's lots, lots of, lots getting lots of interest. And there's definitely fish out there, but no takes yet. Um, I'm going to switch from sending my rod out far. Uh, I might put a clip down on it and, and bang it just over at the side there. Um, As long as we can just get that one fish, just get off the mark so it's not a blank. I then don't mind having a rod out at distance. It's not really a distance mark. The water doesn't really get that much deeper uh, the further out you go. So you're just looking for the for the feeding areas more than the uh, more than the depth. Um, I would love one day actually. And I don't know if you can do it. And there'll be somebody out there in, in YouTube land who'll be able to tell me. On the old submarine base, um, if you can go out to it, like on a rib boat or something like that, I mean, I don't suppose anybody's really going to stop you. But can you fish off it? And is it worth fishing off? I would imagine it is because it's a, it's a stanchion. It's not a floating platform. It's a stanchion. So there probably is marine life directly in front of it. I'm going to take the rib boat out there and moor it up. And, uh, and and fish off there and you could in, the in theory you could fish off there all day all night you know as long as you wanted well where we might go in a couple of weeks, we might go down to Sutton on Sea in the school holidays. And there's a proper toilet there. I don't know if it's open in winter, but there, there is a proper toilet there. So if it's open, you can go to the toilet properly. Yay! That's the only problem for the little ones, isn't it? They don't have the bladder control that uh, that grown-ups have. No, it's a proper toilet. Oh, thank goodness. It's not a long drop. It can do, yeah. So yeah, well, but it's, uh, there's there's a lot of knocks, a lot, a lot of knocks, a lot of interest in the baits, but not no takes yet. Um, so like I say, I might change my distance rig to a to just a, a flapper, and send that out over there as well. So sort of cast it not at distance, but just more over into the gun into the gunnel, into the gunnel into the gully um, it's gonna make reeling in interesting but yeah. there goes roses again what? 
but not firm enough to be a bite. Just reel it in. No, if we reel it in, and we might not put it back. If we reel it in and there's no fish on it, we might not put it back where the fish was. I'm not that good at casting. I can't hit the same spot every time. Paddleboard is coming back. He's been out at um, out at submarine pen, submarine base, whatever it is. I call it the submarine base. I know it's not a submarine base. It was a defence fort, wasn't it? Well, it's two, and there's strong strong chains in between them to stop submarines getting into the Humber estuary. At least that's what I'm told. Um, but yeah, so it's it's just nice not to be sat at home. not about it's it's a build it's just a building out let's see it's not about um what else was i going to say so yeah i was thinking about sutton on sea i was thinking about um fuller street um alf isn't with me today because he's in isolation yeah, but uh, like I say, for, for somewhere like Sutton, somewhere like that, you, you need a day because it's, it's an hour's drive. You want a few baits to choose from in case one isn't working for you. So we'll, I'll sort that out. We'll go. We will go. It does fish okay in winter months. Uh, you do need a bit of a chuck on you. Um, although it is a very deep mark, it is a very deep beach, so you don't need to be, uh, you know, a 200 yard caster. Um, Wait a minute. What? Must be over at somewhere else. No, it's close, it? I think, I think it's finished coming closer now. I don't know what time it is. About half twelve, yeah, it's it's about as close as it's going to get now. It's not going to get much closer now. So we'll definitely be staying dry sat here. Uh, well, that's because you keep putting them in the sand and then in the sea. Right, little knocks on Rosa's rod again. I don't think the one I'm putting out at distance has had so much as a sniff. I'm going to have one more cup and then we'll reel them in because I'm going to change my rig over to the same as yours and I'm going to send both rods over into the same area. Um, I might see about getting a last minute bit of holiday next week. And I might do a night session. I think midweek the tides are about 3 a.m. Charlotte won't be at birthday. Charlotte won't what? Charlotte won't be at home on her birthday. No, she's back at school, isn't she? Um, If I'm off, if I'm not at work, and if the tides are all right, we'll find somewhere to go. Yeah. Whoa. You want to go to the wall on your birthday? We'll see. Depends what the tides are like. You can pee here if you need to. Just go over by the fence where Dad went. Nobody can see you. Right. And now I don't need to go to the toilet. All oh, right. Or did you just pee yourself? I didn't. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. She's sure. So we'll probably have another couple of hours and we'll head home about two o'clock. 
It's all right with you. Well, you don't always get privacy on the wall. Normally the wall's really busy. Are they? Yeah, normally it is, yeah. Apparently it was really busy last weekend during the good tide that uh, we were in lockdown for. Yeah, but I'm a little bit creepy. I like the wall better. You like the wall better? Everybody keeps on walking down here and stays driving up Yeah, but they don't now because it's lunchtime. So if you need to go, now's the time to go. I need to get a little military spade and do a little latrine. You know, one of the folding spade, spade things. Strap it to the front of my box. So yeah, that's, I mean, I've not really, because I've, because I've been poorly and things like that, I've not really been paying much attention to tides and catch reports um and things like that so I, I genuinely genuinely for the next month or so i've got no idea of marks other than the wall um and i mean there's enough fishermen fishing the wall at the moment on youtube and i think if i am to fish it i'll probably fish it sans camera without camera um, because like I said, there's, there's every man and his dogs on there fishing and filming at the moment. Although, I mean, they are the videos that do well. It is clearly videos that you guys want to see. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to have to use the catchphrase of let me know in the comments, aren't I? Um, you know, if you guys could let me know whether you're perfectly happy to just sit and watch, watch wall videos or whether you'd like to see different marks. Um, the other problem, really, with fishing at the wall, um, you know, if you want to watch a wall fisherman, watch Vern of Vern Sea Fishing. Um, for, if for no reason other than the fact that he's... He can light himself up a lot better. He can see a lot more of what he's doing um, than I can. Uh, I am hoping in, in, in sort of after Christmas and, and early in the new year to get myself another uh, larger panel light uh, to see if that will that will make things a bit better for, for filming there. Uh, but the uh, the LED work lights that I bought don't have enough throw on them but it is something i'm looking at changing my setup for um if i can get my hands on another leisure, leisure battery because i've just redone the shed out at home mm -hmm. so what i should be able to do is um run some power off me my solar and charge a third battery, or we run two batteries in my shed um, to power the stuff that's in there. But if I can get a third battery, I can. Um, You're getting cold now, are you? Yeah. Now that sun's gone in. Um, yeah, if I can get my hands on a third battery at a reasonable price, I can charge that. And then when I'm going to the to the bench, to the to the wall, I can throw it in my boot with an inverter if needed, or I can get some DC lights, some DC powered lights. I don't know, I'm torn. Because another light bar would be nice, but they're not really made to be fish to be taken onto a beach. So outside of using it at the wall, I wouldn't really want to use it because they're not rugged enough. So some DC powered lights. 
uh, and a decent sort of probably under, probably 110 amp hour leisure battery I'd probably see a three or four hour session um, with just running a couple of lights off it I don't know there's only one way to find out isn't there So, I oh don't know, enough of my ramblings. Sort of thinking out loud to you guys at home. Um, although, the feedback I get is that uh, it's, it's quite welcome, is my ramblings and my thinking out loud. <coughs> That's me. Um, this is, apparently, you know, people like it. It's like I'm sat chatting to you guys. So, if you do like it, and you're not already subscribed, do press that subscribe button and that thumbs up button, all the thumbs down. Do get involved in the discussion in the comments below. Um, I don't have a regular sort of show day, as it were, a regular video day, um, because fishing is not my full-time job. I, I have to fit it in and around work and family and things like that. So you don't get absolutely littered with content and I don't publish on Facebook I don't I don't advertise on Facebook there is a Facebook group and as always I will try and probably as always I will forget to put a link to the group in the description below and in a pinned comment but I always forget but if you search <laughs> if you search, if you just put into Facebook one man and his rod uh, the channel group has the has has my logo so you will see it there's also um there's also a profile as well that i have set up to this channel as well so either either although i tend not to be signed into the profile as much these days um the group i do allow youtube posts i don't post myself uh, and i do allow selling in there as well so as well as discussion, catch reports, location chat, chats and things like that. All that goes on in the group. Or it, well, it comes in spits and spats. I've only just started it. It's only, I think, just close to 200 people in there. So, I think it's bait change time. Yeah, there's a spider on you. There's loads of spiders on me. Just part and parcel of being out in the outdoors. Is it another little tiny one? Yeah. Do you want to reel yours in? Not well, I've got a hot sauce on my hand. No, I didn't. I'm turning around. We'll spin you around here and watch. Yeah. Better pick that up actually, because it's not fastened up. She doesn't put the lid on it. There she goes. Look, I think there's a possibility there's a fish on there. <laughs> so I'll get hers rebated and resent, um, and then I'm going to change the rig on mine over to a clip down and send that off to the right as well. Um, try and sort of hit into that gully a little bit. Now we're at the top of the tide. <laughs> you need to move your hand down the rod. You need to move, that's it. That's it, now hold it between your legs. Keep going.
Keep winding. No, I hoped there was a fish on there, but there isn't. Keep winding. Why have you got hold of the line? Put the rod tip down. Don't have it straight up. You'll hit yourself like that. Put the rod tip down. You've got it all tangled now, haven't you? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You need to, when you're winding, hold it like that. Uh, I didn't catch it. No, the squid's gone off it though. Oh no, the squid's gone off one of them. Yeah, the squid's gone off one of them. We might try just sending a bigger piece of squid on one of the hooks. Really? Yeah. <laughs> See, she's a real fisherman. I lost one. Yeah, I, I knew it. I knew how, because when, when it was close to shore, it went back out. Did it? Yeah. I'm going to set it back out, don't you worry. But we're going to try slightly different bait we're going to put just a piece of squid on this one a big piece of squid mm -hmm. and the bottom one we're going to send out with a, a rag and a squid flag actually i'll get the camera and we'll just have a look at the rig with the with the, with the youtubers with the guys at home i wondered how long it'd be before you'd nick me spot All right, okay. If you say so. Okay. So, I've got, it's not a straight bomb, but just a bomb lead. Going to an imp. It's on a swivel. I like having imp, my imps on a swivel. And then a hook. These are just one O's at ones, I think, or twos. Uh, a little silicon bead, not just acts as a bait stop really. Going to a, a oh, what are these ones called? Can't remember. Clip, uh, clip down swivel anyway, it's by breakaway is that one. Then up the top here, and raise you up. Up the top here. We've got a normal swivel, a pair of beads going to an SRT spring and that just sort of tensions the whole rig and, and helps it stay clipped down for casting. They look dead. They're not dead. They're still breathing but they look dead. I think they're very cold. Probably. That bit of squid sat on my knife. Is that squid? Yep. It's a bit of squid. Right. Pop that there for a sec. It's probably not going to work. No, I just have a bag of whole squid sat at the side of you. In that tray at the side of you, there's a bag of squid. Same way they sell anything in a shop. They fish for it.
Hooray. I really should have grabbed my scissors, but hey ho. Well, I don't know if this is the right technique for a squid flag, as it were. But all I'm doing is a little strip of squid. And just sort of concertina in it on, sort of back and forth in it. It's like that. And then this top hook is just going to get a strip of squid just out of interest and this one I'm going to thread so I'll go through it pull the hook line through through it again I do love I did, the, the amount of dog walkers I hear, especially in the likes of somewhere like this, that think they've got control. They think they've got a well-trained dog. And this fella is just shouting at his dog. From It must be 40, 50 feet away from his dog. And dog's just not listening to him in the slightest. Anyway, it, it does. I mean, the dog's just belted off now down to the sea. He's got no control over it. But if you speak to him, he'll have the best trained dog in the world. I mean, the dog's not causing any bother, per se, other than just not listening to him. But, I don't know. So, yeah, the, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you about it in a minute. We'll have a bit of a chat. My husky, because of my neighbours, um, yeah, my husky, because of my neighbours, has become antisocial because the dog they've got next door is antisocial and she unfortunately has started to copy it um, and think about it the reason dog owners like that fella make me chuckle is because they're the type of dog owner that they'll have the dog off the lead dog will come bounding over and he'll just be 40 50 yard away standing there going oh it's all right it's friendly until I shout back, yeah, but mine's not. Then all of a sudden you see the panic of him trying to control his apparently really well-controlled dog. Now mine, of course, is on a lead and is now, is already at my side, but his dog's completely ignoring him and has run over and is about to get its head snapped off, you know? And the thing is, it's dog owners like that that would blame me for having my dog out under control. This is feeling quite heavy actually, Rosa. Oh, I see it. I'm trying to grab the line and pull it. No. No. Just for some reason, it was dead heavy. But I'm not going to catch anything on that, it's tangled up around itself. We've got cockles and weed on the weight. So we've caught a cockle. Yay. But yeah, we're going to change this rig over. Caught a yeah. Wait, can we show it to Mum? Mum will see it on the film. It's still alive. So I'm going to cast, I'm going to throw it back. So I'm going to pat down this rig. Wow, that took some doing. The well, Chinoo hook has gone back through. There we go. That was never going to catch anything. If it's been, depending on how long it's been like that, I suppose. I'm going to take this rig down. 
I'm going to swap it for another one of the clip down rigs. Move your butt. I need to get in the box. You can sit back down on it in a minute. Done. You can sit back down again now. Moody bum. You're a moody bum. I don't even know if the fella that's currently shouting at his dog. I do. He might, you might even be able to hear him on camera. <laughs> yes. So the dog's just completely, the dog's just doing what it wants to do. It's doing doggy things. It's playing and running around. Looks like a young Springer. Or maybe, a, it's not, it's, I don't think it's a King Charles. Um, I mean, actual fact looking, it is actually kind of behaving. It's kind of doing what it's supposed to do when it needs to do it, but. Yeah, it just, remind, it just reminded me of, of sort of when I'm out on the dog walks and the other dog owners are like, oh, my dog's fine, it's fine, it's friendly. And I shout back, mine in. And all of a sudden. They're all panicking. Because... Uh, Because, 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 uh, yeah, because the dog, uh, assholes. <laughs> uh, is that the only swear word I'm allowed to say? You're not supposed to say any swear word. Hmm. Well, it is actually a swear word. I know, that's why you're not supposed to say it. And I'm just going to duplicate. I've probably just sped up all the footage, actually, but I'm just going to duplicate what I've done on the first rig. Apart from I can't be bothered to put a, a flag on that bottom hook. And we'll try a squid and rag bait. Why? Where did it go? Oh, OK. I say, if it went out to sea, I can go and get it a little bit. Right, where's the other one gone? The other one's over there. So, we'll send it over there a little bit. Oh, that's a miscast. I let go of that far too early. But it'll do, it'll do. Oh, I fluffed that one. <laughs> so, that's a few rants actually in this video, isn't it? That's uh, one about dog owners or think they've got control over the dog. One about keeping fishing marks clean and safe. I can't remember what the other rant was now. Oh yeah, just a bit of a whine about equipment, filming equipment. I don't think that uh, Rose is in any water anymore. We'll have to recast that one. Well, guys, what a slow day. My microphone's still working, yeah. What a slow day indeed. Um, early doors, the rods were twitching all the time. But since high tide, not a sniff. Not so much as a sniff. Um, you know, there's there's been Nothing. Bait, baits are coming back completely, completely untouched. Um, just, just nothing. No matter where I go, be it at range, close in, off to the left, off to the right, absolutely nothing. But that being said, what a beautiful day it's been. Sun has been on and off shining all day. But it's been warm. 
been dry. Rose is struggling. Because there's been nothing going on, there's been no fish or anything like that, Rosa is struggling with, uh, with keeping her attention on the fishing. But like I say, she's eight years old. The fact she shows an interest at all is, 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 a, is a miracle. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do, I'm gonna do about another cast or two, another two or three casts. Um, in fairly rapid succession, uh, probably about 10 minutes in between each one. Use up some bait. I, I'm not going to get back out again. I might get back out midweek, uh, but I'm not going to get back out before this, this worm's no good. So um, I might as well. <laughs> I might as well. Uh, I shall release what I don't use and, uh, and call it a day. So yeah, about another, about another half hour and we'll be packing up and going home. I'll probably reduce down to one rod just because it makes packing up a lot easier. Um, but I'm going to do the final time lapse of the day. So I'll, uh, I'm going to set you back. Um, and try and get the whole sort of area in shot now that there's not loads of people walking around and things like that. If any fish come, great, we'll, we'll stop the time lapse and we'll have a look. Um, but it's just been dead calm. I've just, uh, I've just had a perusal on Facebook and the reports, even from the wall, are uh, not very good. Uh, so I think uh, we've had a feeding frenzy, haven't we? The storm's whipped up all the seabeds. It's loosened all the bait, all the, all the food. They've had a good feed and they've probably gone back out to deeper water for a little bit. Um, tides are on the increase, this today is the lowest tide, um, so tides are on the increase now. Uh, Blaine's just messaged me, what did he say? Um, I'm, I'm signed into a different account now. Um, but it's, it's around about a 3am tide on Wednesday night, so we might, might meet up and go out for that one. Uh, aside from that, I hopefully will get out next weekend, but probably to a beach mark. Um, just I find the beach marks more rewarding. Well, nicer. Not necessarily more rewarding, but certainly nicer. Um, better? <laughs> Nobody could see. No, I was filming, talking to the camera. I did hear kids coming over there, so I couldn't, I couldn't see you. Behind the grass. They were up on the top behind the grass. I couldn't see you. See, so, yeah, I'm going to put the time lapse. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll see you for the outro. Don't forget, especially if you've come this far into the video, don't forget to press that subscribe button. I know everybody says it, and there's a reason everybody says it. It really does help us out. It really does help us out. Um, I am on the downwards hill, downhill bit now towards 1,000 subscribers. The projections are I should hit 1,000 around February, March time. Uh, but... That's all going to depend on whether we go back into another lockdown, isn't it, really? Uh, I think the chances are pretty high that we might end up back in another lockdown. I know, throw it in the water. It's squid that I've used.
Um, I know they're saying, you know, oh, we don't want another lockdown, so on and so forth, but I, I, do, I do, I think it's inevitable. <laughs> um, so we'll have to see because that, that will only that will mean it makes it a little bit more difficult to get bait um, I do class going to Immingham as, as being quite local it's 30 minutes um, so the wall might still be on the cards it depends on what rules get imposed this time but I do think it is coming I do think it is coming but who would have thought we'd have a sort of 15 16 degree day 12 days from Christmas is it 12 days from Christmas 13 days from Christmas something like that 13 days from Christmas day and I'm sweating my nads off. But yeah, not so much as a sniff on the rods. I'm going to switch you back over to time lapse. Then chances are, quite frankly, that I think the way things are going, um, the next time we'll speak will probably uh, be as I'm packing down. So I'm going to tidy up a little bit, tidy away the rigs that I've changed from. stuff down that doesn't need to be out anymore. So I'll see you in a bit. down it's going to be it from me today unfortunately a rather uneventful however very nice day today no fish to speak of well no fish but a razor 
show. Rose has found herself a nice razor shell. I've already said yeah. Um, yeah, no fish to speak of. In fact, no fish at all. Um, but I'd be lying if I didn't say I've still had a really nice day. Um, just being out after not being able to go out for like I say, I think I think all told, I think we've spent nearly three weeks uh, at home. Going stir crazy with cabin fever and um, all that fun stuff. Uh, But, yeah, no fish, nice day, lovely day in fact. The weather's been absolutely champion. It really has. Uh, and the thing I like about coming here is everything's nice and clean to go home. So, there's very little in the way of clean up when I get home tonight. <coughs> Uh, I don't know if you'll have, you'll have picked it up on that time lapse, but I just put my uh, little Pen Mag 515 Mag 2, so it's a it's an older generation one, and just had a few chucks. I've taken the magnet all the way back, uh, and obviously I was only overhead overhead thumping. But I didn't didn't nest. Um, but I was definitely, you know, 20, 30 yards. That was sort of the limit of the range I was getting. Uh, so definitely, definitely needs more practice. And perhaps not using the right rod. I don't know. I don't know. And my plan was to actually have a practice with that on the Akios, but I uh, I couldn't be bothered getting a third rod out because in actual fact I was going to fish three rods if Rosa was able to manage her rod but she's still just a little bit small aren't you bless you he's still but you're still wanting to give it a go aren't you So she wants to go to the wall again, so we will we will do that at some point. Next time we can go back to the beach and save the wall for my birthday. <laughs> I hope you realise it's not always going to fish like it did when we were there catching all those whiting. All the whiting have gone now. Moved on. There's been some... Uh, the cod have made a fair showing. The cod have made a fair showing when conditions are right. Um, however, so far this year, at least public set, public, publicised, um, there's been nothing of any size come out so far. But it tends to be around about this time and later, so December onwards. Where the, where the reports come in of the cod being of, of any particular decent size. Lots of three, four, a few five pounders. But I've not seen any double figures yet. But yeah, I've not seen any double figures coming out yet. Oh, this has got, oh, it has got a... Somebody asked me, actually, before I forget, somebody did actually ask, does the pen have a weighted butt section? It does not. Oh, and that's not threaded. 
it was glued but it's worked its way loose that might be something to keep an eye on and see how it was glued in um, I didn't break that at all to get it to come off and it's just come straight off I'll have to reseal that when I get back but it's not threaded so you wouldn't really be able to put a weighted section in there unless you put unless you glued it in but somebody did ask I don't remember I don't remember if it was somebody in person or if it was someone on the YouTube but somebody asked me guys that's going to be it for today's video the only thing i've got left down left to pat down is you guys so don't forget like share subscribe it's because of you guys that the channel grows i'll see you later